Okay, I'm going to try to explain example 10.2 of how they came up with the annualized realized rate of return. Okay, so we've got example 2 and it says calculate the realized return for Microsoft stock. So the problem we're trying to answer is this one right here. What were the realized annual returns for Microsoft stock in 2004 and 2008? And to do this, we need some information on the dividend and the return. So we can get that information from the internet or from other sources. There's a brief explanation here. And then you can see on the screen, we've put that information together in a table. So we put together uh, the date information and the dividend. Okay? And then from there, we can calculate the return. Now, let me show you how we do that. Okay, now at this point, I've scrolled so that you can see the formula in this little calculation here. Now, how did we come up with negative 0.18% to show the ret return from December 31st, 2003 to August 23rd? Well, the 8% was the amount of the dividend. So that's available on the internet as of 8.2304. And then using this formula, we take the dividend from the period we're interested in, right? And then we add to it the price at that point and divide it by the original price. So to do this calculation, oh, and then subtract one from it. Okay? so. The dividend was 8% at 82304. At that point the price was 2724, so that's that number there and we divide it by the original price, 27.37. And to do that, we come up with a negative 0.18%. So during this time period, Microsoft had a negative return. And then we repeat this any other time um, we've had a difference in a dividend rate or a price change. Okay, so we see 11.1504, if we repeat that calculation, we get 11.86. Then the next time we have price information, we can repeat it. Okay, now 12.3107 to 12.3108 is another example, but we're just going to walk through the 04 example for purposes of this demonstration. Now, let me scroll down and provide some more information for you. Okay, next we have to figure out what was the annual rate of return. And for the period of 2004, the annualized rate of, turn, rate of return was 8.92%. Now, how did we calculate that? We calculated it using this formula here, which was take 1 plus the return from every quarter and multiply them. Okay, so what was our return in the first quarter? It was 0.9982. Well, what's that? That's 1 plus the return of quarter 1. Now, let me show you how I calculated that. I'm going to hit my F2 so you can see it. All it is is using this formula. It's 1 plus the return. Well, since the return was negative, that first term is 1 minus 0.18%. And that gets my 0.9982. Now, some of you might prefer to enter it, enter it this way as 1.0.0018, right? I mean, that's the same thing as 0.18%. You're going to get the same answer. All right? Now, I'm only going to illustrate that calculation for the first one, but you would do the same thing for the second quarter, too. Now, they've already done that for us, I think. Um, now, where's our second quarter information up here? 3.08, right? And that would make sense because we've got a positive number. And then for the third quarter, or is it the fourth quarter, we've got a negative rate of return. Okay? Um, and since that's negative, that's our third term, 0.9755. Actually, why don't, why don't I go ahead and show those for you? Okay, here I've put them in for you so you can see. 
Okay, so we're looking at the data and we know that the next time there was a dividend, it was paid on 11.15.04. And I think the point of this formula is that it's whenever you know there was a dividend that you could annualize it. So 1 plus 11.86%, if I hit enter, that gives me my 1.1186 that you see there. The next one down is 1 minus 2.45%. That's the 2.45% there. Okay, so if I slide back up, you see that we had uh, uh, we had dividends paid twice, and then we calculated at the end of the year. And given that that's the information ha we have, we would do all three of those calculations. In 08, they give us four calculations because there was... Um, uh, a dividend paid on February 19th, 513, 819, um, uh, and 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, there was a di three dividends, and then you also do the end of year calculation to find the total return. Okay, now let me slide down again. Okay, now I've slid down again to show you that this is the equation 10.5 that we use to to multiply the various um, returns through the various period and then we're done if I multiply those you can see that right here I just take you know the values of those uh, in my case it sells D5859 and D60 the, this is just Excel I just hid the grid lines from you um, so that's 1.0892 and then of course we plug it into that minus one formula so we would have to then subtract one from it um, and we get the 8.92, turn that into a percent sign, and that's the 8.92 that you calculate right up there, okay? Now, I actually would prefer to put parentheses around these so that we recognize uh, that we're following, we're doing the multiplication first, and then once we get the answer, we get a minus one. And uh, hopefully that helps. This is a quick demonstration to show how they came up with the uh, annualized rate of return. So we've answered the question, what was the realized annual returns for Microsoft stock in 2004? Okay. Put that up there. And hopefully that was helpful for you.